Hello, my furry little friends. My name is Eric Shocker, and I'm going to do a quick little tutorial on how to do an accounts receivable agent report in Excel. Now, you may be asking yourself, why would you be do, want to do an accounts uh, aging report in Excel? This would be the case where you're, uh, you've imported lots of uh, invoices into your accounting software, such as, let's say, QuickBooks. And for some reason, the dates were incorrect. So you want to manually uh, make a correct aging report using Excel. This is how you would do it. So... Uh, this is going to be my second tutorial, so we're going to go to T2 right here, like Terminator 2. Double click on that, T2, here we go. Now, as you can see right here on the bottom, it says Outstanding Invoices. These are your outstanding invoices right here, column A. Column B, is, this is the information that we're going to be pulling in. This is going to be the name of the vendors, uh, uh, carriers, customers, vendors, whoever. Whoever owes you money is going to be in Section C. Uh, D is going to be your amount, E current date, etc., etc., etc. So what we're going to do is what we're going to do is we're going to do a VLOOKUP. Um, but what are we going to do a VLOOKUP for? A VLOOKUP standing for Vertical Lookup. Right here in this section, all invoices. This is all your invoice. Let's say you exported this out of, let's say, QuickBooks. This would be your partially paid, paid, um, outstanding invoices. So let's say there's a thousand of these, all this information, but you only need your outstanding invoices data. So this VLOOKUP that we're going to do is going to allow you just to take the information you need and pull it from this, this pile of data. All right, so how, how do you do a VLOOKUP? What you do is you click on the cell that you're, you're gonna start with, right? It's gonna be this, this, this beginning cell, number two, 2B. And then you click on Insert Function. In that box, you can just type up VLOOKUP. <gasps> Excuse me. Click on that. And the lookup value is going to be your your invoices that is pertinent. Your the information that is it tends to be smaller. Uh, basically, the data that you're trying to 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 pull uh, to get the I mean, basically, what it is is the data that you're looking up. That's tend to be the smaller data. That's the pertinent information that you want you want. In this case, it's your outstanding invoices. So you want to highlight that section. And then you click on the table array. The table array is going to be all your data, all this, all this, this pile of junk, all this stuff that you just don't want to look at because it's too big, right? And then you want to click on column index number. This section is, uh, what it's saying here is what column, what index number. Right here, see it has it says number, so we have to put a number in there. So what what column are we looking up? A, B, right? This is column two right here. But we also got to look at the the junk pile here. A one, B two, right? So we're gonna put two because we want that information. We want all this stuff right here. And then what we want to do is we want to do range lookup. Now, in Excel, it's kind of a strange thing because in life, oftentimes we think, oh, it's true, it's true, it must be right. But for some reason, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's somehow logic in some engineering or scientific thought process, I don't know. But in Excel, false, like it says here, is the exact match. So you type false. And you can see everything is populating here. 100, oh look, invoice, date, name, amount. Wow, look at all that. Two equals false. Equals right here, 42055. Yes, everything looks good, boom. Okay, 
see right here this little this little section this little this little square box if you just hover over it your your mouse will turn into a smaller box a smaller x looking thing little plus looking thing uh, once that happens you just double click boom all the data just populates in that section okay and then because we, we we've we've already logically set everything up in this insert key right here and you see you can see all, all that date right there all you would have to do is do that again see that little little plus section just drag it just dr just drag it over just take it and just drag it and what what it's doing it's pulling the names out of this section out of this box here see that and then what you can do is you can do the exact same thing boom so you got all your names now you got to be careful if like let's say there's a name that's uh, down here like this one right here that's that is, is showing as a date uh, you can just reformat that to general okay and that's like the actual name 112 uh, as you can see here, go down here, 112, see? All right. So the next step in, in, our, in our process of getting the exact days is um, what we need to do is figure out the due date right here. So what you want to do is go to that create a box that says due date, the hit plus in that section or equals on your keyboard, click current date, and then you want to minus the current date minus the date sent out. Okay, go ahead and put that formula in like the little bracket things. And then you minus your net. Now what is your net? Your net is basically how many days are you going to give this individual to pay you back. So net 30 would be, you'd give them the time that you sent them the invoice, they have 30 days to pay you back, those sons of guns. Okay, we'll do uh, 33 days. Okay, we're gonna give them 33 days. And this is the formula that you would use right there. Nothing complicated. Go ahead and hit that. So the due date is, it's showing here that this is 292 days past due, past the net, 33 days okay so this 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 individual is almost a year late literally almost a year late so go ahead and make that little X double click boom all that data Wow okay so right here as you can see these are your 280 days past due these are your 203 days past due. And all these negative ones right here, they have actually extra days. Uh, just, just, to, just to show you, like right here is 1116, right? And today is 1111. That means they have 23 days before they're late. Or 23 days, and then after that, they're late. Excuse me. 218 2016 this is way ahead of time this is like we gave him we gave him 33 days plus uh, this forward date of uh, 218 2016 this is why it's 70 71 days so all of these right here all the negative ones are going to just be the current they're going to be current you don't need to worry about them so we're just going to create a current section and just zip that down all right so now we have all this data but we have a lot of these little formulas. So what you can do is just highlight everything, control C, and then control V. And you'll get this little this little uh, clipboard thing. Little You'll see the little clipboard and the little drop-down box. Dro the little drop-down arrow allows you to use values only. Basically, it takes away all the formulas, cuts and pastes it, so it, there's no issues, okay? So you just have a clean sheet here of data. All right, so this is where the fun begins. I know you've been waiting. You're like, Eric, you're just wasting my time. I haven't learned anything cool. Well, this is where it gets a little bit cool. This is where I like. I think it's pretty cool.
So what you want to do is create what is called a pivot table now. So you highlight the data like this. And then what you do is go to this insert section here. See this little tab up here? Insert pivot table. It's not pivotal tab table. I've done interviews for people and they always say pivotal table. You sound like a freaking moron. Say pivot table. All right. Now it gives you two options. Um, this what this does is it creates a new tab down here, or you can down here in the bottom you can use the existing area uh, because it's a, an, an accounts aging report. Uh, most likely you want to use a new tab because the data can get big, especially if you have thousands of invoices. I've had to deal with thousands of invoices before, millions and millions of dollars. So, but if you were just to to, to use the pivotal pivot table to uh, to do maybe some sums or uh, just look up the, the different values of maybe different vendors carriers or whatnot you could use just this 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 tab down here and select a certain area but for this t t uh, tutorial we're gonna go ahead and just create a new tab hit OK as you can see it created sheet a sheet down here we're gonna go ahead and highlight that Double click on it and just name it um, AR Aging uh, Report, RPT. Okay. Now here's the pivot of the table. It pops up this these boxes here. Okay. So what we want is we want the name of uh, the people that owe us money, which are these fools right here. And then we want um, we want the amount. So it pulls up, sums up the amount. And then we want the days past due. And you're like, oh, crap, this looks so terrible. I don't want to see all this crappy data. I can't decipher this data. Now, in these four boxes below, down here, down below here, you, my face might be in the way, uh, you'll see a section that says pa days past due. Take that, set, just, just take that and you move it to this column label section right here. The days past due section and what it does is it creates a aging report and now you can see look oh 200 days past due amount fourteen hundred dollars loopy is two hundred dollars social warriors whoosh, those guys man we need to charge those sons of bitches off twelve hundred bucks two hundred days past due uh, we can look at uh, six hundred happy Gilmore He's six hundred dollars off. Uh, he's two hundred and eighty days past due, and then we have Snoopy and more social warriors that haven't been paying their their bills. And then we have all these guys right here. The one one two is good. ABC is good. Brownie point warriors. They've been uh, they've been doing uh, they've been uh, they've been getting their brownie points by paying their bills. They probably have a high, high credit score. And believe it or not, uh, Loopy is not doing too bad they're two hundred dollars off and then uh, 280 days past due on the 400 snappy has been paying their bills so this is a pivotal table and how what you can do to format this to make it look a, a little bit nicer would be you could just just double click here and these these boxes here you can um, um, you can just rename them uh, if you have a boss or something you need to impress, days past due. And then down here you could just put name. And then you could uh, take these, this data here, and you go home. Let's go ahead and move this forward a little bit right here. And then these right here, you're going to want to put these in, in a number format. And to get rid of the dollar signs, you click on that. You can highlight this section here. Okay. Uh, I don't really like grand total, but um, just put amount. Okay. And the bottom, the bottom sections, you can actually, uh, you can actually put. Um, 
And under accounting, it looks kind of nice to do something like this. And then you could even put dollar signs like that. Um, so this would be your basic aging report. Um, I mean, you can format it any way you like. So how, how, how do you use this? Okay, so now you have this aging report. Let's say, let's say you have thousands and thousands of invoices that need to be taken care of. Well, how do you use this? Well, let's pick on the social warriors. You know, those social warriors. Always talking, always whining, but they're never paying their bills. So you can go to here, right here, the 200 days, pa days past due section. Hover over that and just double click on that. These are all the invoices that are outstanding. And what you can do is you can email them this, this list here. What I like to do is do reply here. And just kind of stretch that out like here. And this, this will allow you to... Uh, um, have them reply in this section. We're gonna we're gonna email the social warriors, those sons of bitches. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna change that to red. And change this to yellow. No, that looks terrible. Change that to red. And then we're gonna we're gonna just we're gonna put format this in the middle so it looks a little bit nicer. All right, so what you can do is you can just highlight this section here. Control C, you can go into your, uh, like uh, let's say you have Outlook. You can create, you can create a little, uh, a little uh, template in Excel, I mean in, in, um, in Outlook. Control V that. Uh, you can stretch this out, go ahead and stretch that out a little bit. Uh, my mouse isn't working, sorry. Anyways, and what you can do is just email them that, and then you can create a little signature, you can insert signature. Uh, mine would be my business. I have a sh I have a small little accounting firm called Shocker Accounting and Tax Solution right there. Um, and you can just send them. And this right here, as you can see right here, it says current invoices outstanding. These are your invoices. These are the the dates sent out. This is the company, the Social Warriors. This is the dollar amount, which you can format that into dollars uh, let's see and then this, this is the current date this is today this is the due date why is that uh, this is a days past due the due date it's these are the days these are the 203 days past due and then right here is the past uh, due information, your 200 days past due right here. And then you can, like what it says here, it says you can input the promise to pay date in the reply section. So they can say, I'm going to pay on, let's say tomorrow. So 1-12-15 and they, they would reply that way. So I'm going to go ahead and send it to myself. I'll just do Shocker counting subject. Um. All right, you're done. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video tutorial. This was T2, Terminator 2, or tutorial 2 for me. Uh, I will make a T3, and I'll be back. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.